Hey guys, today we're gonna to be setting up two AC867 TP Link bridge access points. So let's get right into it. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is, of course, unbox it, put it together. It's a little convoluted, but once you get it together, then you're good to go. We went ahead and already hooked this up to a PoE, which is included injector. We got it hooked up to our network switch, which we have both plugged in, and we also have it plugged into this laptop here, and we already are at the interface. Now, to keep in mind to get to the web interface of these units, they have the static IP already set for 192.168.0.254. So you're gonna have to set a static IP on your machine to be able to get to these machines. Now, of course, in order to set a static IP on your machine, you're gonna to wanna to go to your control panel, go to network connections, go to your ethernet adapter, then you wanna to go to IP version four, then you're gonna to want to use the following IP address, put in that 192.168.0.10. Once you put that in, we can go ahead and close all these out, and then we can go to our web interface here and go to 192.168.0.254, then you'll be able to hit to this login page. Now, the default user username is going to be admin and the password is going to be admin as well. Now it's going to ask you to change this once you log in. So let's go ahead and agree to the terms of service here and hit log in. Like I said, it's going to go ahead and prompt you for a new username and new password. Make sure you change this to something strong. So we're going to put ours in right now. All right, we got ours in. So you're going to go ahead and hit finish. Now keep in mind, if you have two of these devices plugged into the same network switch, you're going to want to make sure you plug in one at a time because you can't have two devices on the same network, the same IP address, right? So plug one in first, log Log into it and you're going to want to go to the network tab here and you're going to want to change your LAN address here. Let's say uh, this one's 254 and we can maybe change this to 253. So then the other one over there, when we plug that in, will be 254. And then this one here will be 253. All right. So once you change that IP address, go ahead and hit finish and then it's going to reload and you're going to hit that new IP address. You can see 253. Now we can go ahead and plug in our second AP. Now we've already changed our IP address. That's why both of these are plugged in right now but like i said you need to change the ip address before you get that second one plugged in so we went and plugged it in that second one so you can see we have one here at 253 and then we go to the next tab here and we got the other one at 254 so now we can begin our configuration so let's go back to the 253 because this one right here we're going to make this the main access point and then this is going to be the client. So how this is going to work is this is going to send out an SSID that we set in a password that's going to beam that Wi-Fi connection to this. And we're going to make this the client, which is going to connect to that kind of like how you would have an access point in your house. You know, you have your client would be a laptop or a phone and that will connect to your access point, right? So that's what this is going to be happening. And then that's going to bridge that connection. And then we'll be able to have a long distance connection to a workshop maybe, or to maybe say you got another house on the property or maybe building the building if you're in a city um you know if you have a building down a mile or so these can go up to a couple miles so they're as long as it's nothing really in the way let's go ahead and get the wi-fi set up and go from there all right before we get started with programming these we're gonna go ahead and put ap here so we know that's the access point and then over here we're gonna just do client so we know that's the client so we got those labels so when we wire them up we know which is going to be actually sending the signal to that second one so now that we have these set up and we are logged in and we changed the IP addresses. Now we can go ahead and do the configuration part, right? So our main AP is gonna be access point, so that's perfect. So we're gonna go into wireless here and we're gonna go down. We just wanna make sure we have a couple options here. So we have the wireless radio enabled. We got the SSID, so you're gonna to wanna to copy this information down because you're gonna to wanna to use that later. Come down and then you wanna make sure your security mode is WPA and then go ahead and put in a PSK password because that's gonna be the SSID password. So make sure you put something in there. I already put a long password there as you can see. Save those two informations and then we're gonna go ahead and go to the top. We're gonna to save it. Looks like it's down here. Yep, we're gonna go ahead and hit apply. And then once we apply, then we're good on this access point. Then we're gonna to go to the second access point which is gonna be our client. So we need to change the operating mode up here from access point down to client. So we're gonna hit yes to that. Like I said, this is gonna be our main access point. That's our client. So we need to get that into client mode so then it can connect to a wireless signal. So once we change that, we're gonna hit the save icon up here. Then we're gonna to go to the same tab here, wireless. And we're gonna go down to our SSID. So we're gonna get and put in the SSID that we had earlier. Just make sure that's the same as what's over here, main AP. We're gonna come back here. We're gonna change that to auto, that's good. 
good. We're gonna change that to the WPA PSK. Now we're gonna put in that password that we had earlier. So we're gonna put that password in here. I already got that copied and pasted in there. Now we're gonna go to the bottom and hit apply. Be careful when you do this because now you're basically telling that access point to communicate to this access point. So now it's gonna create a network storm where you plug in two ethernet cables in the same port and now you're creating, see the traffic going like crazy? So now what we, we just did was we created a loop. So now this is plugged into that switch, that's plugged into this switch, and now this is connected to that, which is creating a giant loop. So we wanna make sure we go ahead and unplug that client AP. So this is the cable here for that. So we're gonna unplug that. So now once we unplug it, you can see now the traffic has kind of stabilized and it's not flashing like crazy. So then you know you don't have a loop going again. So now in theory, that AP is now connected here. And if that is the case, then we can unplug our dedicated wire here to our laptop. So we're gonna unplug that. And now we're gonna plug this directly into our client AP. And then we should still, once we plug that in, now we should be able to communicate both to the client AP and the main AP. So let's try this now. And we're gonna go here and we're gonna try to refresh the page. So if this works, there you go. That is the IP address of this unit. And we're connected only to this. So you know this connection is now working between the two. So if we go back here and we go to our the AP and we kind of refresh this one, and look, it refreshes. So we know we're connected to that AP and we are also bridged to this AP still. And like I said, this laptop is directly plugged in to this client AP over there and that's connecting over here, which then connects back to our switch and then we can get out to the internet. Now, of course, we still have that static IP set, so that's why we don't have any internet, but let's go ahead and hit save on that because that's asking us to save the settings. Now, we need to get back into our control panel, change our static IP of our NIC back to DHCP. So we're gonna go into control panel, network and sharing center and then do change adapter settings and then right click on ethernet adapter here go to properties and we're looking for that ipv4 address again and change it to automatic now in theory if both ap's are working fine you should get an ip address and you should have the internet back now so let's go ahead now that says fail to get data because we just um like i said we changed uh, our ip address back to our local ip address so now you won't be able to get to this unless you set a static ip or you change the static IP address of your APs to the same network address or the same subnet as your current network, right? So if my network is 192.168.1. whatever, then I need to change the zero to a one and maybe change it to 1.20 and then the other one 1.21 so then I can still communicate to these on my local network. So in my case, I don't need to put it on my network because it's actually gonna be bridging a internet connection. So I can't set it for DHCP because it's not gonna get an IP address. And if I wanna get into these ever, I need to set a static IP. So that's why I'm doing it in my case. But, but now if we go to Google, boom, loads right up. And that is going through that IP to this one. So there you guys have it. That's how easy it is to set these things up. I mean, pretty damn cool that you can actually use these up to miles away. I'm actually using it to connect to my workshop from my house. Um, so we're gonna see how that installation goes. We'll do another video on that installation. But I just wanted to show you a quick rundown on how to get these set up pretty quick. And that's all there is to it, really. I mean, it's pretty quick to set up. So right now we're using fast and we're just testing our internet. And you can see this is connected to this AP. And then this is our internet line coming into this uh, workshop. And you can see it, it is working.